I was checking that uh, session bio just to see what I promised and versus what I'm actually delivering. Uh, that, that's game, game design reality for you uh, there as well. Uh, no, it's good to be here. Uh, how many of you are freaked out by public speaking? Be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just, uh, just picture me naked. It'll be fine. Um, sorry, I had to do it. <coughs> that's what they say in presentation class, right? Icebreaker, icebreaker. Got to have your icebreaker. Okay, how many like money? Like, I'm uh, two hands up for that one. Like I hate to say it, but if game design, well, okay, it doesn't always pay. But when it pays, it's the best job ever. Uh, okay, I need two people who really like money. One and two. This way you can't see each other, that's good. Okay, yep, you and you. Okay, we're going to play a game. Um, because we don't just design games, we play them, right? So uh, you have to pick a number between one and ten. Don't say it yet. One and ten. Basically, that number is how much I'm going to pay you in dollars, real Canadian dollars. And they're worth a lot. And you see, whew, it's spiking up. It's not being pulled down with grease and everything. Um, you each have to pick a number. However, the only catch is uh, whichever of you picks the lowest number is the only one that's getting paid. So you can each p feel free to pick anywhere from 1 and 10. Whoever picks lowest is the one that I'm going to pay. And I brought money. Some of you that took my game design class know that I pay. I pay. Um, if you tie, then you're going to split that money or as close as I can afford to split with the amount of change I have. So the way I want to do it is basically when I say go, then I want you to show me on your two hands um, what number you picked. Okay, so on the count of three, you got a number? One, two, three. Okay, we got a seven and we got a six. All right, so uh, six dollars. I was kind of hoping it would be a little lower. You would de distrust each other a little more. So this lecture's costing me money. I didn't think this through, but play testing is often the best way to figure out your mistakes, right? Um, so if we played it again, do you think your, your guesses would change or do you think they stay the same? Not, we're not playing it again, just so we're clear on that. But if we did, knowing that you pick six, you pick seven, I wonder what would happen. So, uh, yeah, that's right. Well, I did ask specifically people who want money because there are some of you out here who you know, might just want to see what happens if, you know, whatever, something else. And we'll get to that concept later, utility. Uh, so, okay, so let's start. We're talking about game mechanics. Um, that was a little game in itself, right? A little bit of game theory, a little bit of a mechanic. I would say it was a compelling mechanic because there was something on the line. There was something that you stood to gain. And uh, it was, you know, sort of a versus game because y your decisions affect basically the result of each person and the reason I asked if you want money because if you don't want money the whole game breaks down it might just be random like so I gotta figure out this clicker what are we talking about um, it's been cool to see other presentations uh, a lot of great games represented Mass Effect Alpha Protocol lo is looking good Dead Rising anything that you can have a port mower and is pretty cool um, so I'm going back a little bit a, a little bit more of a bird's eye of game design but specifically focused towards game mechanics uh, this stuff is important, right? And uh, it's a game. Games are about gameplay, right? So I'm a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I'm a systems designer, I'm a gameplay designer. Um, and I believe, I believe that whatever else you're doing, if your gameplay is flawed, if your game mechanics aren't good, uh, chances are your game's not gonna be that good. I mean, there are rare exceptions. Um, and of course, these other things are important. If you want a truly amazing game, I think a lot of times you need, you need good narrative, you need good story, you need characterization, et cetera. Now, these are some of the games I've been involved with. Uh, Age, of Empire, Age of Empires was the first um, digital game that I worked on. And uh, it, it was a fun project. It was very challenging. It was quite hard. Uh, then I worked on Sonic Rivals, and that was, that was really hard. And I worked on Monster Lab, and that was really hard. I worked on Sky Parts, and that was really hard. In fact, so hard that it's not even out yet. Maybe, hopefully, it will. Um, but that's game design. Like, if you want, a, if you want an easy path, it's not easy. And I think, um, how many are pros in the industry already? How many are students or people that are interested in the industry looking to get in? Cool. So it's, it's a good split there. Um, it's not easy, but I think that's the you know uh, Matt was talking about crafting the perfect challenge, right? It, I think if game design was easy. Um, you would lose you would lose interest and and probably go do something a little more interesting in life It's not easy at least in my experience. It's about the hardest damn thing ever and there's days. I wake up asking why why but uh, But it's fun also so uh, I also design uh, paper games. 
I'm pleased to say I recently sold two more games, uh, Longship Viking Raiders and Crows, that'll be coming out, one this year, one probably beginning next year, uh, from Valley Games, which is a nice Canadian company that publishes in the, um, in the German board gaming sector, which is something like, I, I play a lot of German style or Euro style board games. How many of you are German style players? Cool. Um, but my roots are in, you know, as American style games you can get, or however you want to classify the games. I still just basically love games. I don't distinguish between video and analog in terms of enjoyability in my, or meaning in my life, but also as, as far as design. And like I mentioned, I'm, I'm a systems designer, so we'll be talking about systems, and I think that um, board games and paper games are some of the best way to just isolate those systems and uh, you know, learn the craft. And really, when you think about it, a board game instruction manual is a GDD, right? I mean, pretty much. So. Uh, what else? I don't know why I put this on here, but um, I wear suits sometimes. Ta-da! No, just kidding. I rarely do, but ever since I started my MBA, I figure I'm supposed to look important, even if I'm not. So I've been working on that. Um, back when I went to college years ago, uh, not that long ago, but you know, 12, uh, 12 or 15 years ago, long enough ago where they didn't have game design programs, kind of like Matt was saying. Um, and I wish they had, but they didn't. So you had to find other things to waste your time. And mine was uh, aeronautical engineering. And I had good fortune to work as an engineering analyst and aircraft engineer for about eight years. Uh, my first job out of college was on the U-2 spy plane, which was old before I was a twinkle in my dad's eye. And uh, so that was kind of interesting because I was at this really cool place renowned for all this fancy stuff that they do and innovative, you know, innovative new things. And I was working on a 40-year-old airplane. It was kind of interesting. But I uh, worked, worked uh, with Burt Rattan's place on Visionary Vantage. And he's the guy that did Vo uh, the Voyager in 86 and went on to do this XPRIZE, the Space Tourism Virgin Galactic stuff. So what I, t oh yeah, and this is Space Shuttle Main Engine, place that whether or not you believe we went to the moon, I saw the rocket hardware, we had the capability. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. But uh, basically all this kind of combines together to me to say I nearly had a hand in a lot of really impressive stuff. So that's kind of my uh, accomplishment to date. So originally I thought I was gonna take a couple mechanics and break down into super gory detail. And I thought that would be kind of interesting. And I, did, I started that, and I worked on a couple drafts of the presentation, and I realized that that was really dull. So uh, I'm, we're taking a little, top, little step to the top here and looking down for a minute, and then we're going to dive into more detail. So the goal of this sort of presentation that I hope you take out is whether you're a student or a practicing pro, I hope there's something in here that you feel, oh, you know, that changes the way I think about it, or it gives me some idea of why I'm doing the things I'm doing, or maybe gives you some additional tools in your toolbox. We're talking about the craft of game designer. So obviously we need to talk about writing, right? It's pretty obvious to me. We're gonna talk about writers. So how many of you write? Cool, and what's the, what's the aside from the boy meets girl, all that business, what, uh, what do you do with your, with what's telling a story? You can guess from my little, make a character, put him in a tree, throw rocks at him, <laughs> right? So uh, then when you get good, you, uh, you complicate their lives in as many other ways as you, as you can. Um, when I first started writing short stories, of which I've, I'm pretty bad at, um, I was submitting a story, I think, to some magazine that was edited by Algis Budras. And he's, he's this guy that has been editing sci-fi stories you know, since the dawn of time. And, and he wrote a, a book on kind of story crafting. And one of the little things I got out of there that I thought was good is just Every time you think it can't get worse for your character, make it worse. And that, that's what breeds drama. That's what breeds a compelling story. I mean, no one wants to read about, like, there's an asteroid headed for the Earth. Oh, actually, it's not. You know, we're fine. That's kind of that's bad. You know, but it's like, it's headed for Earth. No, it really is. Um, we had a nuke that could dismantle it, but, you know, we don't have access to the keys, and we're out of time anyway. And the space shuttle, someone lost, lost the, the fuel, and we don't know how to get up there. And, you know, Bruce Willis is going to have to save the day. So... This is butchered a little bit, but uh, this is the end of a story, right? There's a part where it's just, it really sucks, can't get any worse, you're in the tree, and I guess I should have put Cujo up there and stuff barking at him again. Uh, but then you do resolve it through the kind of the crisis and the climax, and then, um, yay. Then you have your denouement, or pardon my pronunciation, but where it's all resolved and you think back about, this is supposed to be him thinking back on himself climbing down from the tree. Uh, that's, that's my ver version of Dana Mont. Okay, getting back to what's pertinent to this whole, this whole deal. 
See, the thing with, with plot and story is that, you know, we've been doing that for thousands of years, right? We've also been playing games for thousands of years, but the people who design them haven't exactly passed on the knowledge as much. So we have to learn a bit from, from the writing. And any time we get too serious about game design, start using the words codify and things like that, then we need to put on our thinker hat, assume the thinker pose. This David Parler guy is kind of funny. Um, I came across this quote, and then I shortly came across quotes where he then proceeds to then define exactly what a game is. <laughs> so I guess, you know, it's like, don't touch the stove, it's hot. <laughs> you just can't help yourself sometimes. Uh, despite the fact that it's foolish, we're going to do it anyway. Sometimes you go, to go, to go back to the gospel, right? The most basic lessons have been passed on. Sid Meier, um, great designer, in my, my opinion, I guess in many of his opinion. And his, this quote is quite well known, and sometimes it's misquoted, and there's this argument about what exactly he said and you know, all these things. But this is the gist, and I heard him say it at GDC, so I mean, it's, whether or not it was originally his quote, he certainly claimed to it, so we're going to put it here. Uh, as far as what we're talking about with crafting, you know, I guess like challenge and also game mechanics, this is what matters, is uh, a game is about having a goal, and more importantly, so that's the objective, an artificially limiting means for achieving the objective. That, that to me is like the key thing that really dis defines the base from what all your game mechanics are going to come from. Um, some games are quite stupid, you know, really, when you think about it. Hockey? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, hockey's a great game. But, you know, what's the goal? Score more points after 60 minutes. Does anyone know why 60 minutes? I don't either. I was just curious. Um, no, I mean, like, why 60 minutes? Like, why not three periods of 15 minutes or 12 minutes or 16 minutes? I don't know, you know. Uh, but we, the game designer, the commission or whatever, they create these rules, uh, you know, five on five, one of those. Uh, and then there's a goalie, and he can only have certain equipment. And by the way, like, it's illegal to walk up and punch the guy in the face unless he punched you first, and then it's encouraged. Um, icing, you know, how big can the goalie's pads be? Uh, basically, all that stuff is just to eliminate, um, actually, let's use soccer instead of basketball. So uh, one version of soccer could be uh, grab the ball and just run it into the other net. And it doesn't really matter how many people are on the field, and you don't have to kick it. You know, you can just do that. That would be a pretty dull game. Well, it might be rugby, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but the point is, like, we impose all these restrictions. Like, you can't touch it with your hands. And in fact, even if it, like, you know, what, accidentally touched your hands, do they still blow it dead, or is that, does the action continue? So, um, except for the goalie, he can touch it with his hands. And he can wear a cooler shirt than the rest, and stuff like that. But the point is, it is arbitrary. Like, and as game designers, you are in control of all that. You are in control of whatever arbitrary rules 